What is going on, my beautiful ladies and gentlemen of the world? We are back with another replay theater. Let's just hop right into it. We got... I have so many re... Because I've just been watching AGDQ for the past week. And that's really all I've been doing. I haven't been playing anything. I have just only been watching AGDQ. And... But I've been popping on, you know, like... Every single night, right before I go to bed. I will... Oops. I will just pop on here real quick and you know take a minute or two to download all the replays that look interesting unfortunately one of the big things because I do want to see as much Izanami as I can because I really want to learn I want to figure out that character and unfor I don't know what's happening here but this Izanami is playing mad weird uh, and unfortunately one of the most prolific one of the best Izanami players is a uh, person who goes by the name Sadie, who is also a very, has a, always been a very solid Tager player. But unfortunately, they are one. Oh, they could have punished that so hard. Unfortunately, they are one of the individuals who sets it so you, you cannot view their replays. You can't play them back. And so it just makes me sad because, like, I'm constantly, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're the one that is uploading their replays, which makes it weird that they keep a. Uh, Uploading replays when you can't see them, but it, ma it makes me sad because I keep seeing their replays and you know It's a good tagger player, so I see their tagger replays and I'm interested I want to learn Izanami and I know that they're one of the best and so I'm interested and then I never actually get to Boy this is a Nami player Just this, They're so weird like <laughs> They it's so weird to see somebody play a character that is very heavily rushdown based just run away and never do anything. And that's really kind of what the Izanami's been... Like, they've been so patient. And I feel like the My Player... Like, now they're kind of abusing it. But I really felt like for the entire first round, the My Player was... Just kind of didn't really know what to do. But unfortunately, similarly to... Uh, I mean, the first round basically went like this happened. The My got a few hits here and there, but never really got anything huge. And the Izanami player got one touch... And the round was basically over at that point. Like, they almost ran the entire thing uh, out on the My Player until they ran, they did Overdrive. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, I wanted to see a Fatal Counter combo. I wonder if they fucked up there. Because uh, like, usually in scenarios like that, Izanami seems like she has a pretty solid anti or I would say, it's I don't know the command, but it looks kind of like a 6B type of move, the little kick, and then she flips into the air. Seems like a pretty damn solid anti-air, but granted, I have, I play characters that don't really have great jump-ins. Ironically, Tager probably has the best jump-ins out of him, Azrael, and Susano. Because Tager's JB is actually really fucking good, and he has a bunch of different ways to delay his timing coming to the ground, which can fuck up anti-airs and kind of, you know, make somebody nervous to actually throw one out. God, that, that move is so obnoxious to punish. Nobody expects that flip, so they always try to punish them like they're going to be on the ground, but they're always airborne. That is actually one of the big flaws of having a DLC character who is potentially going to be permanently DLC locked, depending on how this series goes from now on. Um, surely she could have killed... Okay. It was a fucked up ending, but surely she could have killed with a confirm into a super at that low of health. Because that was definitely like the health threshold that most characters supers tend to have that about that level of minimum damage attributed to it. Also, I think this is the first Subaki replay we've seen, which is exciting. I also found a couple Valkenhines, which is also exciting because I have not seen what's his Asuya, I believe, is the name of uh, a guy that's always been using Valkenhein. He's the only one left that I see in Japan's professional scene. And so seeing a little bit of Alkenheim is always fun. See, yeah, that's a good... It just My not using Grand Punish in the air is a big flaw in my Tager gameplay. I have actually... I'll talk about it a little because I want to focus on this match. But I have done a few things recently to try and improve 
my Tager. It hasn't really, like, necessarily improved me, but it's proven stuff that I typically do to be terrible that I shouldn't be doing. Oh, oh, oh! Eh, she might live! Nope. That 2C, I was not expecting that 2C to do that big of a chunk of damage right there. Like, it was very po I thought she was going to live with just barely any health left. But then 2C bopped her. That is such a good move against Tager. Well, not really. But, I mean, the thing is, you know, it's kind of like a half-screen sliding low, the fatal counter, so it'll catch any sledge attempts, it'll catch a 6A attempt. Uh, but also, it's very, very punishable, and against Tager, any move that you use that's very punishable is not going to end well. Nice! Let me see what he does after this. Spark Bolt, maybe? No. That is one of the big flaws of Grand Punish and going for aerial loops, or aerial confirms with Tager, is that generally you get a free roll away if you end a combo with Grand Punish. Ah, okay. Problem with Tager. Half of your offense is just hard reads. Ooh, like that! Unfortunately, he can't get... Oh, he might! No, the reset! Now he's definitely dead! It's kind of funny, because I'll bet money the majority of those... Hey! Rhymes! I'll bet... <laughs> I will bet money that the majority of those that people get where they do rapid cancel 360B and it gets a reset, they probably didn't intend to get the reset. <laughs> It's probably just because that timing is so tight. Oh, right. So let me actually... <laughs> and the announcer keeps going. Uh, oh, not all the way. But so yeah, so with Tager, I actually I sat down and I went through training mode with every single character in the cast against Tager to figure out who you could do Gadget Finger, 5A Gadget Finger with resets on. And uh, it's a really small... I'm not actually going to go into it. I might talk about it later. I'm not going to... Because, I mean, I'm sure it's available somewhere else, the list of characters that you can hit with it. But so I went through and I did that. Then I found out, then I tested it to see how solid it was. And it's actually really not, it's not something you'd want to go for every single time. Because it is uh, very, it's not a real setup. Like, you can mash out of it. And the way I tested that was to just set the Tager AI to mash 360A um, constantly. And, like, so I would try to do Gadget Finger 5A Gadget Finger with 360A which is basically the fastest option Tager has himself. And he was getting grabbed out of the actual gadget finger whiff. I wasn't even getting into the startup animation of 360A. So it's not a real setup, but it can definitely surprise people. And then I also, what else did I do? I did something else, but I can't remember what it was. So fuck it. Oh, I tested, I tested gadget, because one of the most common things that I do uh, is off of gadget finger is 3C found out against almost the entire cast if you're crouching it extends your horizontal hitbox enough that you have to block the 3c but if you are standing which is when the 3c would normally hit it won't hit and so you basically you have to i believe you either have to be attempting to jump to get hit by it or you have to throw out a move which gets you counter hit or you have to be crouching which obviously you won't get hit with it but you'll st it'll still put you in block stun but if you're just if you are literally just standing there, not doing anything, 3C won't touch you. And so, you know, figuring stuff out <coughs> like that, figuring something that, you know, something that I do very commonly is an awful option. Knowing that kind of thing is very important. Oh, how are you going to drop that? Like, you can't drop combos against a character with Tager's hitbox. Hurt box. I always say hitbox first. Wonder if he could have 360 that. This is not gonna... Oh, he has active flow. It did kill... I didn't notice the active flow until the end. So because of the combination of overdrive bonus damage and active flow, that killed. That basically used to be his old 3 or 720 damage to begin with. 5600 is where it started out. And they dropped it to what, like 51 or something like that? 5200 in Chrono Phantasma. And now it's down to 4600 in this game. It hurts. 
I actually, I would say that the uh, 360 damage hurts him the most. Because 360B used to do 3600. And now you have the same move, which is 360A. Uh, only does 2600. That really does hurt. Exactly 3500, isn't that cute? Oh. I really feel like that's not real. How much damage? Eh. That was worth it. I just, I, let me actually check this out. I mean, again, I don't really trust Dust Loop's frame data. But I really want to look and see what they list the startup of 360B as. Because it just, it doesn't seem like it's fast enough to be real. And I want to look at it. Oops, damn it. Back. Frame data. Zap. This always fucks me up too, because they list them under... Because they list all the characters in alphabetical order, so obviously the first thing I look for is Tager, but they list them under Iron Tager. Specials. They don't even have... <laughs> they have nothing. They have... They don't even have the damage for the first move, which, like, you can see so easily. So, yeah, they don't, they don't have the data for it at all. Bummer! I mean, I could very well do this myself, because I can... Since I'm recording at 60 frames per second, the game starts at 30, 30, at 60 frames per second. It runs at 30, 60 frames per second, I should say. Uh, I could very well just check it myself by starting, well, it's a little, eh, whatever. I just, again, I, I feel like it's too slow to not be something that you can usually react to. Nice counter. How much would it goddamn suck if you could counter that and then it just activated her armor? <laughs> love that move. That is my favorite. Like, that might just be one of my favorite moves in the game right there. Oh, that sucks! So that was weird. Yeah. Man. Seeing that armor come out makes it so difficult to just think of anything to do, really. I mean, especially with how fast it starts up. Like, he had thrown out that move and it was already there. There's really nothing he can do about that. That was a pretty... That started off of a 5C, right? I think if he had used Overdrive there, he probably could have killed. Which, like, Hakumin against Izanami? I 100% feel like that would be worth it. You know, it's kind of that hindsight thing, like, oh, obviously he didn't need it, so he's keeping burst, but... Going for that guaranteed kill, especially against a character as heavily momentum-based as Izanami, as... Strong as her momentum is against a character like Hakumin, who, you know, all of his defensive options are inherently risky. That active frame was stupid! Like, that shit had dissipated into the air, and it still bopped him. That's crazy. That is such a good move. That sucks. Oh, doesn't suck. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was actually thinking for a second there. Oh my god, she has the armor up. This is about to do some bullshit. But nah, you got, he got... It's okay. Didn't go the way I thought it was about to. I do think, I don't think, uh, actually, no, her armor can. I think it's just that the initial hit caused so much damage. Or maybe it's just the fact that she's frozen, she's frozen and it's special because of that. But I believe I do remember playing against an Izanami and having that armor eat the first couple of hits of Magnatech Wheel. So I don't think there is any kind of special property where, like, oh, that's gonna fucking hurt. Oh, and he even has overdrive. I wasn't really, I was talking, so I wasn't paying terrible attention terribly close attention. I thought the Hakuman had gone into overdrive. Wow. 
that dude held counter. He just he held counter, and this is what it got him. Holy shit! Momentum. I'm actually surprised that didn't catch. It seemed like the hitbox was there. Oh no! He held counter again! He's gonna lose for the same exact decision! Oh shit! That was weird. I guess this would be a scenario where it might help if I actually had inputs on so I could see what... Because he had to have tried to do something. You don't just, you know, watch somebody overdrive cancel and then just stand there. That's ah, just a jab, you can't do anything on that. That is the flaw of Wake Up. Oh, is that low vulnerable? I actually did not know that. It's either that or he might have caught the end frames. Because that, that move recovers. It's very fast, it's deceptively fast. So it's either vulnerable to lows, which would make sense, and it would be pretty consistent with other moves of its type. Or, alternatively, he caught, like, the two recovery frames that move has. Yeah, that was a good Habiki. Also, what do you think? Masamuni Big Love or Masamuni by Glove? I would say the first, because gloves can't have sexuality. <laughs> he actually got whip punished for that. All that. Why would? You, oh, I guess he does have DP. I think. I don't know. It is an interesting, interesting psychology behind it. He got DP. It was the first knockdown. So you have the Susano player who might just try to set the precedent early when he won't die for it yet. Ooh, that was dirty! That was a cross-up overhead, which if he had somehow magically managed to block that, would have turned into another cross-up. I'm not sure if those little down plus whatever attacks those that button actually is, is an, are an overheads themselves. See, like that player, they got knocked down once and they immediately threw out DP. It's a DPs by themselves are just enormous mind games. But I feel like the S was being a bit too passive there in displaying that she would back off after only one knockdown. Just in case they DP'd. And then they got another knockdown and they backed off again. Hard decision to make, but this is fucked. This late 40 seconds into the round and they haven't even gotten a single unlock, it's over. That's the big flaw of Susumo. If you've just been getting run over the entire time, very, very little possibility of getting a full run back. I would say really the only possibility at that point, outside of, you know, just a very minuscule chance on the side that you can just run it back by playing incredibly solidly, is an overdrive hit confirm. So, like, so many people are playing so passively so far in these replays. And that's you, typically the exact opposite of what you tend to see in anime games, at least. I am always, I am always free. If you play Ragna, I am pretty much permanently free to uh, whatever the hell that move, or that overhead is called. Fucked up. 
That is just fucked up. Jin is just one of the most single most frustrating characters to play against in fighting games because he is so goddamn solid at everything. And if you fuck up once, look at this. You just you eat so much damage. Like he very rarely busts out like an awe-inspiring level of damage. But it's just if you get touched, you're eating 3k every time. And if not that, then you're gonna hit 4k. See, like right there, 4k. If he busts overdrive on you, that's 6k. It just sucks to get hit by him. Cause almost every single character has like at least one hit confirm where they kind of they do manage to hit you and just like ah you know what the fuck ever they hit me I can be defensive for a second I can block their mix up with Jen it's like ah shit I got hit that's 3k and I'm gonna have to deal with 27 frame traps before I'm gonna get a chance to play <laughs> cause Ragnar is trying so hard and he just walks up and gets the throw Oh shit! That was smart though. It sucks that he's out his burst for that, but Pinocchio Chang would have just been able to burst out of any. He would. He didn't have anything since he didn't have any meter that would allow him to do a burst safe uh, kill right there. I can't let people hold up like that. Oh, your life is dead. Never mind, he dropped it. That did look like a really weird. Gen players confirm. Was that a shitty combo? Because it didn't look like a good combo to me. But Gen is typically very deceptive. In the end, yeah, no, doesn't even matter. Is that disrespect? A fucked up attempt at a uh, ending it with exceed excel? But I really hope, I hope, nope. I have a dream! Oh, you're just gonna get fucking over that fucking projectile. Oh boy, you wanna talk shit about the nonsensicalness, I don't even know if that's a word, about the utter ridiculousness of giving Azrael a DP. Giving Jin something that locks a motherfucker down even longer than they already get locked down by him. Have fun! I mean, I'll be honest, like, if you want to learn this game and you want to... Jin's the perfect character to learn this game with. Unless you want to actually have fun. That being said, if you enjoy the misery of others, you'll have fun playing Jin with that. Because people will hate you. This poor Tager. <laughs> he just wants to hit her. <laughs> Oh man, no, you don't get you don't get the Oh my god, you gotta stop doing 360s, dude. They're not working. She's never in range for it. Like that's a huge problem when fighting against somebody like nine is like they're never close enough. <laughs> get fucked. Yeah. 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 I mean, even when Gadget Finger wasn't shit. You never want to use that in the corner off a knockdown with Tager. But especially now? It's just... It's questionable. Oh, what are you doing, man? You're just giving it away? Oh, that's a bummer. Is that, that, there's no way that's safe. It feels like he just waited a bit too long. I just, I find it hard to believe that a level 33 player would be unfamiliar with the matchup, you know? But so much of what I'm seeing is super weird. Like, it shouldn't be happening. And it wouldn't be happening if they had any idea what they were doing. Also that. 
That's the second time that's just been purely stuffed. Nice. Let's see if they got the read permanently now. Bummer. Because there is definitely a gap in between the armor of a sledge and then the hammer. <laughs> they figured it out. They figured it out. Stop mashing 360A. Start mashing 360C. <laughs> and then they, and they won. Like, that was free. One or the other has to work. So here we go. The man who dropped Hazuma, Jay Anson. I don't even know if this is actually him. I don't know if Japan is the same as a... Uh... Because around here, the majority of the time, if you run into somebody... Now granted, a lot of the pro players stream now, so you can you uh, can typically see what their actual gamer tag is. So you know one way or the other. But most of the time, like the pros don't actually get their own names in online services. Somebody else takes them first. Like, I know one of them, Combo Fiend, is not actually Combo Fiend on PSN. Oh, he's gonna get fucked for that. Tarumi and Overdrive. That wasn't that bad. I guess he didn't have much meter to start with. And that's where the majority of his damage comes from. It's the same thing I need to... You can't press buttons after J2D. Oh, good block. Dang, because he's still got meter. Tarumi's options... When he has meter are just... I can't really fuck with those. Okay. Or you can. <laughs> oh, you sh Oh. Okay. I was gonna say, man, you should have killed off of that. But it's okay. He got the random. I would have definitely, in that scenario, called Tager's fingers getting clipped by the knives right there. I would not have thought 5C would win in a million years. Oh shit! One mistake. You fucked up once and you're dead! Oh! Never mind. There you go, now he's dead. Okay. I would have definitely. Well, he might have gotten his burst. No, I don't think he would have gotten his burst back if you had just done something very, very simple. Like, you could have easily done their, uh. Because he's in the corner, so 5D to send him back. Maybe don't even bother. Like, I was going to say, do one rep of 6C, 5D. Maybe not even bother with that. Just do 5D, B Sledge, 5B, Magnatech Wheel. But it is better to be safe. Because you can't make that entire combo. Like, if he had to get more damage, he could have made that entire thing burst safe by just doing Gadget Finger. Rapid cancel and then do another 360B, but it's just we've seen how many people drop that 360B follow up after a rapid cancel. The timing on that is just so tight. Oh, it's my players just hitting buttons. They're dying for it. That Noel is clearly expecting that's a kill. <laughs> That was just, that was round over. They were starting to reach for their drink. They put the controller down. It's just always so funny, because whenever you see a character get, like, unfettered offense, they just get to have their way. They never look bad. And so it's always like, why do people say Noel is so bad? And then it switches around like this, and now Noel's not going to get to play. Never mind, she got to play. Overdrive doesn't care about tears. It just causes them. Huh, huh, huh. 
<laughs> That's a double entendre. Is it? I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm gonna let this one rock a little bit longer. I'm gonna do like maybe two, three more. Because I wanna get rid of a bunch of these replays. All at once. I did actually wanna talk. I'll wait for another one. But I've, sta I've kind of started to look a little bit at that YouTube analytics page just to kind of, you know, see various statistics. And the average view, like, time spent actually watching is about 12 minutes. But I only really post about 30 minute videos. So I was a little curious about whether or not it would be better to, uh... Oh, come on, you gotta crouch and confirm into that dog! I guess it doesn't matter, because they did the corner confirm. Yeah, it might be better to just, you know, rock 15 minute videos. The problem with, like, with this, it's perfectly fine, because I can just match to match to match to match to match. But if it's online, 15 minutes is like two, maybe three matches, depending on how long we have to wait in between each match. And so I think that's a major reason why a lot of people will edit their videos to only show the matches. Yeah, there's the crash. Oh, yeah. I need to start doing that. That's a better confirm than what I usually do in a similar scenario. She dead? He's not gonna get meter, but he's doing a shit ton of damage now. I thought there might have been some crazy Hornet nonsense that he could add in at the end there that would guarantee. That's a bummer. Probably should not have lost that. That's ballsy, and there's no punish! Oh, you can't let somebody get away with that! Good match. It's a little difficult, but that is something you cannot allow Azrael to get away with. Is just dashing through. You don't necessarily want to react solely to the, uh... Ooh, she better burst this, but is he gonna do Growler? Yeah. I don't wanna burst it back. Oh, yeah, never mind. But I don't use Overdrive. And I should, because it's stupid. He's trying to bait out Exceed Excel so hard with all those jumps. Oh god, and it actually wound up working. Like, every single move he made there at the end was to try and bait out... Exceed Excel. All right, here we go. Cripple fight. In my professional opinion, the worst character in the game. A lot of people argue between Bullet, Kagura, and Noel. I am firmly on Team Bullet. She doesn't even get a special animation for her Exceed Excel. That is the exact same move that she does if you use heat after the end of her command grab. <laughs> How much do the developers of this game absolutely not give a shit about this character? That they can't even give her- see? I guess the only difference is in the Exceed Excel bullet actually drags them along the ground. See what I mean? Cripple fight. Requires constant abuse of overdrive. Fucking active flow. Are you... Shouldn't have died from that. Should not have died from that. You shouldn't eat one third of your health minimum just because somebody happened to have active flow. best combo she got without using heat that's the best combo she got it's fucking beautiful <gasps> oh shit 
she's gonna eat a lot of this. She should. I don't actually know, because they did nerf her damage quite a bit. That used to... I wasn't actually paying attention. Unfortunately, I don't got a rewind button. That was a very unnecessary risk. Because if you were not aware, that move... You can't block that move, but it only hits you if you are attempting to jump or if you're standing. And from that range, there's no reason for another bullet... Especially when you just threw out a fireball. There's no reason to try to go for that. Yeah, they threw that game away. I think this is the third time I've seen this dude have to play against a lychee. Granted, I did, I actually noticed, uh... I believe this guy has the most games played online, period. The Tager player. Active frames! Yeah, I, I just... The more I realize about... Gadget Finger... Oh, that sucks, that had to have been a 720 attempt. Because I have done that more than once in my time as well. It's cool when it works, and then it looks like godlike, with an amazing read. But a lot of the times, it's just a failed 720. Oh, they just won! Hold that. But yeah, just the more I see Tager played, and the more I see Gadget Finger, and the more I use Gadget Finger, the less... He just doesn't really have any good options off of it. I think right now it's just kind of like people are still traumatized from past Tager experiences. Because he was actually solid in Chrono Phantasma. And that scared people. And so there's still some remnant of that where they just see Gadget Finger and they're like, ah, oh, fuck, I gotta guess now. But the guessing game is so just against Tager's advantage. I see everybody doing that now, but I feel like that does less damage. No, you know what, I think it actually does do 100 more, because I believe that mine, the one that I do, is, uh... Oh, you should have just done Grand Punish Rapid Cancel, it would have been burst safe, you would have won the round, but you fucked up! I think mine does 34-31, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> oh! You thought Spark Bolt would help you in neutral against Lychee. Don't you look the fool. Because even if, even if uh, Lychee was out of range of using, oh that sucks, of uh, hitting with a normal, she can just enter stance, and the magnetism will still be applied if the stance eats it, but otherwise she's fine, she doesn't care. And with Lychee, like if you, eat, if you eat it with stance, you can just backdash the magnetism until it wears off, Tager can't do anything about it. That's always, I've always maintained that a lot of people, God, that's like the fourth 720 this dude's tried? None of them worked? God damn. But I always maintain that people make Tager look stronger than he actually is because so many people have the mentality that playing like a bitch is a bad thing. That running away is like playing cheaply and unfairly and they don't want to do it they just want to hold forward and press buttons and whatnot and that's like if you watch a japanese player play against tager that's all they do they get magnetism they're running to full screen and they're gonna stay at goddamn full screen until magnetism is gone they just they make him look so much weaker i don't know but that is the end of this particular episode as per usual playlist for all of them if you've missed any of them there's a playlist available with all of them currently there all of them have timestamps. thank you for watching